Earlier in the spring, I gave all of my goats to a friend because I, my husband and I had plans on moving. But that didn't happen. So I got two of my goats, my does back. Um, the one you see right here is Chicky and Sassy. And then this is a weather. Where is my finger? This is a weather. I got them back from my friend. And this little boy is a little buckling right here. He belongs to her, to Chicky. I kept him as a buckling to breed with Sassy, the other goat, the other doe. But I did get another buckling, and I'll show you him in a second. So this little black and white beauty little boy is Bongo. He's, he came from uh, near Fort Smith, and I paid $90 for him. He's going to be my other buck, and he can breed with both the does. I'm not planning on having any babies next year because the little bucklings are too young, although they can impregnate a doe at two months old, but I don't think that'll happen this time. I could be wrong. Anyways, so I'm making plans uh, to help control the parasite issue that the goats get because we live in a warmer climate. And by doing that, I took this 300-foot row of uh, pasture, and I divided it up into four sections. It can hold up to 10 goats, and I can rotate them every five days. But I'm making extra paddocks. This is just the first four. Okay, so you see where this cross fence is this way. Over where the shed is is the first paddock. Then this, this is the second. Over there is the third, and beyond that is the fourth. Okay, so again, this is the third. No, this is the second. This is the third. And you'll see this little alleyway. It will go all the way down to the end of that red post, and they'll put a cattle panel up to keep the goats out of that section, that fourth section. Um, the pathway is meant to have the goats go up and down it in order to get to each paddock that you keep closed southward on that pathway. Now, on the section headed north, we have a meter yard. We call it a meter yard. It's where the meter reader goes to read the water meter. I also sometimes have goats out there. But as you can see, right here is where I would put a cattle panel and secure it to the fence. And then I have a section here for it to go in between. This section here could still be divided and make another pathway to the meter yard if I need to in the future. All of that pasture beyond this goat yard is also our, our pasture. The goats used to be on it as well. It's about five acres. Right now we're letting our neighbor's cows eat on it. Now yesterday I bought 30 T-posts and it put up the pathway into the goat yard pasture that you saw and then I'm putting it on the outside of our property here, our yard, minus my uh, ginkgo biloba tree that was given to me by a, a second cousin for helping him with his genealogy and he helped us with our family line but this is to fence off the goats up to this point and I'm going to put a gate in now the whole idea is to have a pathway to each paddock and I can still put from this post all the way up past the sumac another strip, some more T-posts, which I probably will do uh, in the future. But this will give the goats some extra grass and weeds to eat on, and the sumac, and the, uh, oh, I forget, the plant with the yellow flowers. I know what they are. They grow up with the ragweed, and they're supposed to be an alternative against the allergies, but I can't think of the name right now. Anyway, the goats love them. So they'll have this extra to eat on as well. To secure 
my enclosed garden on this side so they can't push in. I'm not done with that. But each paddock will have an entrance. So I've got a, one started here. I had to secure it so the goats don't get out. But each one will have an entrance so that they can get into the pathway to get into the next paddock. Okay, so we're in the first part of the paddocks and it goes into this area that I created where when I want to give the does and the bucks and the weathers their copper bolus or some parasite um, treatment, I can section them off in here. That section over there is closed so they can't get out. And then I can run them up through this little narrow space and close it off that door closed and I can secure them enough to gather them up and give each one what they need it's worked for me and this this little makeshift gate goes out to the pasture it's going to remain closed for a while but what I wanted to show you was this is the original goat yard and it is going to get sectioned off as well we've got old housing and here I took down the roof line of a housing because I want to make this into an entrance and not use this side as the entrance of which I'm using now. But we put up this metal shed. This is their housing right now. I've got minerals in there. I've got an area where they can eat hay. I have hay stored there and up at our big barn but from this post all the way down to that fence line, I'm going to add more T-posts. And then to about here, I've got to clean all this out. I'm going to add more T-posts. That will give me two more paddocks. So that would make seven instead of six. And what that does is you, can, you rotate them every five days. Minimum six is the minimum paddocks that you want to have from what I've read that gives parasites a Chance to die off before the goats return to eat in the pasture Which helps control the parasite issue in the goats now all of these goats have had prohibit it is a powder it is a strong poison so you have to be careful how much you give them and you do not give them to your goats if you're going to be breeding or if your doe is pregnant it will kill the baby hello willie you are such a sweetie yes you are anyways and how you how you find out if they have parasites when you watch their their uh poo function if it starts to clot and stuff and then you check their eyelids you see this part of their eye, you pull it down, and if it's white or very pale pink, you've got parasite issues. And if it's white, you've, they're, they're overloaded. And that causes problems because it drains, the parasites are called barber worm, and they drain the blood out of your goat. And then the goat's throat swells, swells up, and then they choke to death. And we've experienced that with goats in our learning process and it is horrible for them and it is sad to see that happen so you want to maintain as much the uh, much parasite control as possible the best way is naturally um, there are certain plants that they can consume that will help control parasites uh, cedar not cedar pine pine tree um, bark is one of them and then there's a grass. It's kind of like a grass. I got some over here. It grows naturally. And it is a dewormer, a natural dewormer. Um, I'm going to come over here and show you some of what it looks like. It, it, it blooms little white flowers. It's growing amongst all these weeds. And it starts with an L. I can't remember the name. But there's some... There's some of that green stuff, oh, like right there. And it'll have little white flowers on it in the fall. It's a natural dewormer. Here, here's some up close. It looks like that. And the goats will eat it. I have fed some to my goats. I prefer that they be out there with it. But right now this is fenced off because of dogs. But this is what it looks like. 
and it starts with an L. I'll, I'll, I'll put the name in the video down below. But this is ours as well. And there's so much to clean up. An old car back there from when we bought the place. Um, dogs have, they come in from the neighbor's yards and attack the goats. So we don't have them out there, but they have eaten all of this before. What do you want, Willie? Hi, Willie. You are so spoiled. Anyways, um, acorns. They have a lot of tannin and they will help control parasites. So we have a few oak trees in here. There's plenty out there. The deer, they get all the acorns there. But the goats fleet the acorns, and I'll give them cedar, pine tree leaves, um, whatever I can, I can gather. But pasture rotation is important, and I haven't been able to do that in the past, so I'm doing it now. And it is an expense, but hopefully in the end it will be worth all the effort because I don't like seeing my goats get parasites. I don't like having to give them poison, but it's a necessary evil when it's, when they have an overload and you have a lot of goats. So, like I said, each paddock is big enough to hold 10 goats. It's um, like a 35 by 100 foot for each section, except for the last two the last one is actually 45 wide, but I can take some of that pasture down and make a pathway and then it will be 35 by 100. Okay, we're leaving this section and seeing our mess. My babies. I'll close it up. Anyway, so that's my new herd. Spoiled? Yes, they are, but I love them. And I hope that this will inspire some of you who have goats to think about pasture rotation. I have a friend who's doing it as well. Um, and I'm hoping it works out for both of us. Um, next year, I'll actually have some sections. Like this one has a housing that's been here because this was a nursery yard. But I'll put sections over there where they have coverage from the sun they get shade is what i'm trying to say and they'll have shade um but i got a couple more a couple more trips to my local uh mina feed and atwoods to get more fencing and t-posts and hay and then i'll be done and ready for for the winter and grazing these guys on different sections because they eat a lot. but So I hope that inspires all of you who have goats who are not doing pasture rotation to think about ways to control your parasite issue um, by controlling the pasture um, and how many times the goat's eating them to give the parasites a chance to die. Okay, so thank you for watching and have a good evening. Bye.